the Revolver box set has been with us for just over a month. But I'm not finished with it yet. One of the highlights of this deluxe set is the full speed version of Rain, but there's something about it which just doesn't sit right with me. So in this video, I'm going to examine exactly how this incredible track was recorded and what I think this set got wrong. I'll also tell you what my favourite sound impressing is and why. I'm Andrew from Parlogram and welcome to... Rain. Now the Beatles' first priority of 1966 was to get a single into the shops and paperback writer saw the beginning of a new era in their songwriting. This wasn't a teenage love song or something your granny could whistle. It was loud, fast, and it rocked. But it's the flip side of that single, which for me is up there as one of their best records ever. Rain was written during a three hour session at John's house, Kenwood, in March 1966. And although sung by John on the record, it was a true collaborative effort with Paul. On Thursday, April the 14th, the Beatles convened in Studio 3 at Abbey Road to complete the recording of Paperback Writer, which they'd begun the day before, after which they began working on Rain. The first task of this five-hour session, which incidentally ran from 8.30pm to 1.30am the next morning, was to record the basic rhythm track. The decision to slow the track down had been made at an early stage, and those five initial takes were performed at a much faster speed than the one heard on the finished record. Now, one of the things I especially love about these deluxe sets is the books which come with them. They're full of wonderful images and fascinating information. But as always with Beatles history, errors sometimes do creep in. For example, on page 77 of this book, which details the story of this track, it states that there were, quote, five takes of the rhythm backing, consisting of electric guitars played by John and Paul and Ringo's drums. But surely it was John and George on guitar with Paul on bass. So that's wrong, isn't it? Now, something else I think they've got wrong is the key the backing track was recorded in. Now, the book states that the backing track was recorded in B flat. And indeed, that is the key it plays on on the sessions disc of this set track three on side two of the vinyl, or track 10 on the Sessions 1 CD. Now I know that the Beatles were experimenting a lot with very speed at this time and didn't always have their guitars tuned at concert pitch, but B flat is a really odd key to play this song in. For a start, if the song was recorded in B flat, the guitars would have needed a capo on the first fret. But to my ears, the chords ring in a way which sounds like it's being played without one. There's also been a lot of discussions on the forums regarding Paul's bass on this sped up version. Many, including myself, think as good as a bass player Paul was and still is, he couldn't have played it that well, that fast, and the track had to have been recorded at a slower speed. Also, I think the tone of Ringo's spectacular drumming just sounds too fast on this version. Now, one theory is that the backing track was actually played a semitone lower in the key of A. Now, because I can't include any music in this video, I'll put a link in the description to another video on YouTube which has the backing track pitched in A. The only thing it's missing is Paul's bass. So what I did for myself was record the full speed track from the Sessions disc, which does have Paul's bass on it. Then, using Audacity software, slowed it down by 5% which now meant that the track played in the key of A. Now, 5% or a semitone may not seem like much, but it made a huge difference to both the sound and feel of this track. The drums now sounded right, and the speed of Paul's bass playing, although still pretty fast, sounded like a much more plausible performance in a way that it didn't with the track pitched faster at B flat. So what I'm basically saying here is that I think the full speed version of Rain presented on this sessions disc plays too fast. But what do you think? Do you agree with me or not? I'm more than happy to be corrected, so please do let me and everyone else know in the comments. I promise I do read every single one. So moving on with the recording of the track, Rhythm Take 5 was marked as best 
and it was that to which John's lead vocals were added onto tracks three and four, with, as the tape box states, the machine running at a slower 42 kilocycles instead of the usual 50. At the end of that day, John asked engineer Phil McDonald to make him a tape containing a rough mix of the track to take home. The mix was put onto a four inch spool, just like this one, with the end of the tape sticking out, otherwise known as tails out. Not knowing that this was actually the end of the tape, John threaded it on his machine as if it was heads out, i.e. the start of the tape. And of course, it proceeded to play the track backwards. The second and final session for the song was an 11 hour one, which took place two days later on Saturday, April the 16th, this time in Studio Two. The session began with an excited John marching into the control room, demanding that everybody listen to his incredible discovery, the backwards tape. And Jeff Emmerich said that from that point on, almost every overdub they did on Revolver had to be tried backwards as well as forwards. The final job, as far as recording this track was concerned, was to add overdubs to the previous session's recordings. With the machine once more running at the slower 42 kilocycles speed, two reduction mixes were made from take five and were marked as takes seven and eight. Take seven was deemed to be the best, and John, Paul and George's harmony vocals, along with Ringo's tambourine, were overdubbed onto tracks three and four. And it was at this point that Paul decided he wanted to redo his bass track. They used the same technique Jeff Emmerich had invented to record the bass on Paperback Writer, which involved using a loudspeaker as a microphone. So his performance recorded during the initial rhythm section two days earlier was wiped and replaced with a new overdub, which went on to track two. At the end of the session, George Martin with engineers Jeff Emmerich and Phil McDonald made four mono mixes, of which the third was the one chosen for release. The track was released on the B side of Paperback Writer, first in the US on May the 30th, and then in the UK 10 days later on June the 10th. Now, being one of my favorite tracks, I've always been keen to find the best sounding version of it. So if you are too, stick around for this next section. Although most original UK Beatles 45s sound great, some, like this one, do have issues. I can honestly say that 99% of all first pressing copies of this 45 I've ever owned sound terrible. EMI's mantra when it came to cutting 45s in the 1960s was the louder, the better, meaning that any dynamics that were present on the recording were crushed for the sake of volume. Listening to 45s by some of the other majors back then, Pi, Decker, etc., I think that EMI 45s from this period are probably the worst sounding of the lot. It wasn't Harry Moss's fault, he was just following orders. So anything has to be better than this first pressing, right? Well, let's see. Now I'm gonna break this test down into two sections, mono and stereo. Mono was still the most popular format in the UK in 1966, and this track was originally mixed with that in mind. The 1966 first pressing with its initial dash two cutting is a mighty sounding record, full of strength and power. The problem with it is that it was cut so hot and finding an unworn copy today isn't easy. But fear not, because that exact same Dash 2 cutting was used on this 1976 reissue, which sounds completely identical and is just as good. That same cut was also used on the 1982 pressing, although by then it does seem to have lost some of its cutting edge. Rain was also included on the Parlophone Rarities album, which initially appeared as a bonus album in the BC13 Beatles Collection box set in December 1978 and then as a standalone album in October 1979, which incidentally is where I first heard this track. It sounds a little anemic on here when compared to the 45, and the cut on the 2014 Mono Masters is better. Unsurprisingly, this from the superb 2019 Singles Collection box set is very close to the original. 
The new mono remix on the EP in this set is in my opinion, harsher and more brittle sounding in the upper mids, which has the effect of making the vocals more prominent. And for me, doesn't sound as full or satisfying as any of the other discs. So for mono, I'd recommend seeking out this 1976 pressing. Firstly, because it's all analog. And secondly, your chances of finding a clean copy for not much money are pretty good. Otherwise, the 2019 singles collection is also a great buy. Rain was mixed into stereo for the first time on December the 2nd, 1969, in the control room of Studio 2 by George Martin, Jeff Emmerich and Phil McDonald, assisted by Richard Lush, a second engineer. The reason for doing so was the imminent release in the US of the Hey Jude album, which came out in February 1970. Despite this album appearing in many countries worldwide, and even in the UK as an export pressing, the album wasn't officially released in the UK until May 1979. Rain, like the rest of the tracks on this original US pressing of Hey Jude, sounds clean and punchy, but the UK CPCS export pressing on Apple is more refined and has a better low-end response. All of the German pressings from the 1970s are a little bass light when compared to the UK export. But this A3 matrix is for me the pick of the bunch. The UK 1979 album comes a very close second to the earlier export pressing. But the remastered version on the 2012 Past Masters and the 2022 remix sound harsh in comparison and lack the warmth of the analog versions. Finally, we come to a couple of DMM, or Direct Metal Mastering pressings. This is a German DMM pressing of Past Masters from 1988, and it uses the same source as the UK pressing, and sounds just like most Final Cut in this era, cold and uninvolving. However, this is a German DMM pressing of rarities, and it's a totally different story. This very late pressing could be found in either German BC-13 box sets or separately from 1983 to 1985. The DMM process was used by Odeon in Germany from around 1983 onwards, and in order to take advantage of DMM's improved sonic capabilities, remastered and recut all of the Beatles albums for that process in 1984. And as a result, these albums have a completely different sound compared to how shall I say, regular pressings. One of the main features is that they sound quite compressed and are very bright and bassy. The word which describes them best, I think, is bombastic. Anyway, for some unknown reason, Odeon took the mono version of Rain, which had been on theirs and everyone else's pressing of rarities since 1978, and changed it for a bombastic, true stereo mix. Now, it certainly isn't a classic audiophile sounding version and a long way from a pure representation of the master tape and all that. It's just so exciting and takes the track onto another level. Unfortunately, finding one isn't easy. The matrix you need to find is A3B1, either on this Apple label with a capitalized rim text or on a two EMI box pressing from 1985 or 1986. It's true, this isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I find it a lot of fun to listen to. So to sum up, for me, the best sounding mono version is the Dash 2 Cut 45. And for the stereo, it's the UK CPS Apple Export. But if it's pure fun you want, it has to be the German DMM Rarities. But what do you think? Do you have a favorite sounding version of this track? Let us know what it is and tell us all about it in the comments. December is going to be a busy month on the channel, so do keep your eyes on our social media feeds for updates about what's coming up, links for which are in the description. If this video has whetted your appetite for some great sounding Beatles vinyl, head on over to our website parlogramauctions.com. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a channel member, hitting the thanks button, or by joining us on Patreon. Links and information on how to do all that are also in the description. But that's all for this time, so I'll say bye for now and thanks for watching.